All right, so in order to get this this motor to fit down in this frame, we're gonna need to, we're going to need to widen the frame first, then we're gonna lengthen it. But the whole the main issue is the bell housing is a lot wider than this frame. This frame's what is it nine inches nine inches wide in the front. And goes down all the way to four inches wide and the real very back tapers right down. So thinking is this is gonna be it's almost thirty inches from from the front face of the motor, well, twenty nine exactly. The front face to the back of the bell housing there. So we're gonna need to go from let's see. Uh, we're going to probably want the front of the motor to sit there. That means the back of the bell housing is going to be right there. Which lines up right there with the foot grasp steel there. So I think we're going to cut the frame tubes right there. And then just bring them right out. And then down the way there. And then back in right at the end. All the way down. And we actually, in stock, happen to have identical tube, even the same thickness, 3 16 identical tubing to the factory frame rails. So, once that's widened, this whole motor should be able to set down in there. Once I move the front axle forward, the oil pan will clear. And then, well, the steering box is going to be completely in the way. We're going to have to move all that up. And then we cut the frame back here and just add length and we don't have to widen it here. Well, we got all the steering gear out of there. Uh, that kind of opens things up. So the idea we're going to be 32 and 3 8 measure from here all straight back. It ends up being like right here is where we're going to cut. Then uh, we're going to bring a tube over, and the edge of the frame rail is going to be right on the right on the foot rest. That's going to kind of come straight out. And I might go for an angle or a straight in, I don't know. The angle will probably look better if we got room. I'm gonna do that. You know, the mount for the gearbox on this, I can't believe this is factory. They weld only the corner. It's crooked. It's crooked this way. It's just kind of weird. I mean, you'd think that'd break, but this tractor's all oh, 40 years old, and I guess it's fine anyway. Um. I'm gonna have to cut these are all all these mounts are just fully welded right in and it's like you know that's quarter inch that's not gonna be fun I'm gonna cut that out move the axle well we're just gonna get rid of the axle first we're gonna widen it uh, well then well we're gonna get rid of the, the tilt bar garbage in there too because this thing's gonna be dangerous enough and we don't want to flip it over um, yeah, we're going to get rid of the steering junk for now and uh, move that forward. Yeah, sorry about the noise, but it's cold in New York and, uh, well, she's keeping the shop warm, so. Oh, well, the tractor's up in the air. Uh, transmission's making a big old mess down there, even though I drained it. I guess it didn't all come out. That's a pretty big transaxle for a mower. Uh... Just getting this pen punched out. Pull the front axle. And I think okay, this 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 mount here. That's like that's three eighths. That's some big steel, and it's it's uh, welded all the way up. It's hard to see, but it's welded all the way. I think I think that's going to be a job for the acetylene. Getting that off of there. And we got to cut these brackets if you're for the I don't know what you call it. It's mule drive. The Cub Cadet calls it, I don't know, but yeah. 
we're gonna have to um, get those off of there and we'll move the front axle forward eventually but then that uh, I'm probably gonna cut that in the center then I can just add in some there and it will look back here again and uh, yeah just cut there and uh, add some too all right well while we're standing up I just cut the steering gear or while well, the mount the steering out of there uh that well yeah there's your front axle there we're basically going to chop this plate right where the slot is there down the center uh, and then we're gonna end up cutting right here like we showed before and then uh well these tubes are coming out uh out there each side all the way down and then we're just going to add some more plate steel in right there and it'll look normal it'll be wide enough to hopefully get this transmission to drop through there especially the bell housing area and front axle probably gonna cut cut these tabs off of there and uh weld it on right at the front there so then we can clear the oil pan and shove the motor forward we're kind of propped up on jack stands um i don't know it's probably gonna fall down when i cut it but we're marked right there right there that is 32 and 3 8 from the front and almost exactly that from the back and we get the cut. Alright, so the frame is cut. We were pretty close to the same spot on each side. Not too bad. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna cut the center there. Uh, we're gonna throw the fenders on because we want our frame tube to be pretty much flush against the hatch. And, well, we'll see if the motor fits. All right, so with the fender successfully installed, uh, the tubes come out, well, sort of in line with the fenders, but I'm going to notch these tubes, cut this out, and our one main tube is going to come out here, and our frame rails are going to head down, and we're pretty much the same on either side, which is kind of surprising I got that accurate, but yeah, she's there. Alright, well got the notch cut out um that one is not too bad this one's pretty bad but it doesn't really matter we'll just fill it in with weld uh basically our uh, tube's gonna come out like this uh and that all kind of fits in like that and then that'll hook up to our frame rail right there And I miscalculated and take into account the actual frame tube. So we're gonna have to shorten a little bit. I think our 45 there is gonna work pretty uh, pretty decent. Well, got the 45 cut on the one frame tube. Well, what should have been a 45? Well, you know, it's not quite a 45. That Harbor Freight saw is not great so we're just gonna we're just gonna kind of cut slots in there and then just bend this over and then weld it and call it a day Come on, so there we go so oh we're square enough I just used an off cut and we're just gonna kind of get it close and uh, yeah 
weld. Well, we got a couple of tacks on there. Uh, I mean, really, once it's all welded and ground, you won't even know the difference. It'll be fine. Well, the frame's gonna turn out wider than I uh, was thinking, but I suppose that's not really a bad thing. We're not square yet. I gotta build the other side and then square everything up. Well, I mean, the fenders aren't square either. They're all bent. But I had to, I had to fix that. Too. That was broken, but yeah, gonna make one more. And we'll see see how she looks. Well, did the same thing for the right side. The tractor it came out pretty similar. I think we're square. I don't know. It's probably close enough. I mean, the fenders I can't really trust them, but the gap's pretty similar. I mean, it it ends up working out. I guess I'm just gonna. Use this little flux core machine and tack everything together and hope it's good and then we'll have to drag out the real welder and get this thing solid again. Big old dip pack. Uh, that's probably good. Uh, here we go. Well, motor pretty much fits. We're just gonna have to cut this at an angle and add some gussets. Um, so then we can actually get the transmission up here. Once the factory rear ends out, it'll fit. Once that's done, I might have to modify the back. We can slide the whole thing back and this whole thing will drop down in the front and we're gonna have to extend this maybe a foot actually once this is all in there we're not gonna have much room for the rear end in there well this is almost how it sits transmission once the factory one's out the tranny is gonna fit in there the oil pan sunk in she is working mint